Buddhism is a diverse tradition with many different branches and sects. There are some different forms of Buddhism that we see. Theravada Buddhism This is the oldest form of Buddhism and is often referred to as the way of the elders. It is the dominant form of Buddhism in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. It emphasizes the study of the Pali Canon, which is a collection of texts that contain the teachings of the Buddha. The goal of Theravada Buddhism is to become an Arhat, a worthy one, which is someone who has attained enlightenment and is no longer subject to rebirth. Mahayana Buddhism This form of Buddhism developed in India around the 1st century CE and is now the dominant form of Buddhism in China, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. It emphasizes the Bodhisattva ideal, which is the idea that one should strive to become a Buddha in order to help all sentient beings attain enlightenment. Mahayana Buddhism also includes a number of different sub-traditions, such as Zen Buddhism, Pure Land Buddhism, and Tantric Buddhism. Vajrayana Buddhism This form of Buddhism, also known as Tantric Buddhism or Esoteric Buddhism, developed in India around the 7th century CE and is now the dominant form of Buddhism in Tibet and Bhutan. It emphasizes the use of rituals, mantras, and visualization exercises to achieve enlightenment in a single lifetime. Nichiren Buddhism This form of Buddhism was founded by the Japanese monk Nichiren in the 13th century. It emphasizes the chanting of the Lotus Sutra, a key Mahayana Buddhist text, as the path to enlightenment. Zen Buddhism Developed in China and later in Japan, Zen Buddhism is a branch of Mahayana Buddhism that emphasizes the practice of meditation and the attainment of enlightenment through sudden insight or satori. Satori is a Japanese word that is often used to refer to a particular type of spiritual awakening or enlightenment in Zen Buddhism. It is seen as a moment of sudden understanding or insight into the nature of reality and the self. Satori is not considered to be the final goal of Zen practice, but rather a starting point for further cultivation and realization. After Satori, practitioners continue to work on developing their understanding and compassion and to help others. These are some of the main branches of Buddhism. But there are many other smaller sects and subsects of Buddhism as well. Buddhist Texts Buddhism has a rich collection of texts that have been composed over the course of its 2,500-year history. These texts include teachings and discourses attributed to the historical Buddha, as well as commentaries and treatises written by later scholars and practitioners. The texts are considered to be the foundation of the Buddhist tradition and are studied and revered by Buddhists all over the world. The Pali Canon This is the oldest collection of Buddhist texts and is considered the most authentic record of the Buddha's teachings. It is written in the Pali language and is used primarily by Theravada Buddhists. It is divided into three main parts, the Sutta Pitaka which contains the discourses of the Buddha, the Vinaya Pitaka, which contains the rules for monastic conduct, and the Abhidhamma Pitaka, which contains philosophical and psychological treatises. The Mahayana Sutras, these texts were written in India and later translated into Chinese, Tibetan, and other languages. They include teachings and stories that emphasize the Bodhisattva ideal, which is the idea of striving for enlightenment not only for oneself but also for the benefit of all beings. Some of the most famous Mahayana Sutras include the Lotus Sutra and the Heart Sutra. The Tibetan Canon This is a collection of texts that are used primarily by Tibetan Buddhists. It includes translations of Indian Buddhist texts as well as original texts composed in Tibetan. It is divided into two main parts, the Kongya, which contains the words of the Buddha, and the Tingyur, which contains commentaries and treatises. Other texts There are many other Buddhist texts that have been written in various languages and traditions throughout history. These include commentaries, which is the country with no Buddhism, there is no one country that has no Buddhism, as Buddhism has a significant presence in many countries around the world. However, 
There are some countries where Buddhism is not the dominant religion and does not have a large number of followers. For example, in the Middle East, Buddhism is not very common and is not considered as a major religion. Similarly, in certain African countries, Buddhism is not as established as other major religions such as Christianity and Islam. It's worth noting that Buddhism has a presence in almost every country on earth, and even in countries where it is not the dominant religion, it still has followers and practitioners. Languages and Buddhism The language of Buddhism varies depending on the region and tradition. The most important texts of Buddhism, such as the Buddhist canon, were written in ancient languages such as Pali and Sanskrit. These texts were preserved and transmitted orally for centuries before being written down. In Theravada Buddhism, the Pali language is considered the original language of the Buddhist teachings, and is used in scriptures, liturgies, and commentaries. The Pali Canon is considered to be the oldest and most authentic collection of Buddhist texts and is still studied and recited in traditional Buddhist monasteries today. In Mahayana Buddhism, the language used varies depending on the region. In China and Japan, for example, the Buddhist scriptures were translated into Chinese and Japanese, respectively. In addition, many Mahayana texts were composed in Sanskrit, so it is also considered as a language of Buddhism. In Vajrayana Buddhism, the main language used is Tibetan. The Tibetan Buddhist canon, known as the Kongyur and Tingyur, contains translations of Indian Buddhist texts as well as original texts composed in Tibetan. It's worth noting that Buddhism is a global religion, and today many Buddhist texts and teachings are available in a wide variety of languages, including English, French, Spanish, and many others. Buddhist Museum Around the World A Buddhist museum is a type of museum that is dedicated to showcasing the art, artifacts, and cultural heritage of Buddhism. These museums typically have collections of Buddhist statues, manuscripts, scriptures, and other religious artifacts from different regions and historical periods. They also often have exhibits on Buddhist history, philosophy, and practices. Some Buddhist museums are located within temples or monasteries, and may be a part of religious institutions while others are independent and may be connected to universities or other cultural institutions. Some of them are also affiliated with specific schools or sects of Buddhism. The exhibits in Buddhist museums may include a wide range of items such as statues of the Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and other deities, ceremonial objects used in Buddhist rituals, manuscripts and texts, and other types of artwork, such as Thangakas painted scrolls, and mandalas. There are Buddhist museums in many countries, such as Japan, where there are several Buddhist museums in major cities like Tokyo and Kyoto, as well as in other countries like China, Korea, Taiwan, India, and many other countries. In addition, there are also Buddhist museums in some Western countries, such as the United States where there are a few Buddhist museums such as the Museum of World Religions in Taiwan or the Buddhist Art and Cultural Center in California. Buddhist Leaders Buddhism is a diverse tradition with many different leaders, and it is difficult to identify a single leader of Buddhism as a whole. However, there are several prominent Buddhist leaders who have had a significant impact on the development and spread of Buddhism in the contemporary world. 1. Dalai Lama The Dalai Lama is the spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhism and is considered the head of the Gelugu school of Tibetan Buddhism. He is also a political leader and advocate for the rights of the Tibetan people. 2. The Sokya Trizin The Sokya Trizin is the head of the Sokya school of Tibetan Buddhism and one of the highest ranking lamas in the Tibetan Buddhist hierarchy. 3. Taiksu Taiksu was a Chinese Buddhist monk who was instrumental in the modern rejuvenation of Chinese Buddhism and was a leader in the Chinese Buddhist community in the early 20th century. 4. 
Vain B. Kubodhi. B. Kubodhi is an American Buddhist monk who is a leading translator and commentator on the Pali Canon and an advocate for Buddhist social engagement. 5. Vain Taiksu. Vain Taiksu is a Chinese Buddhist monk and teacher who is known for his efforts to modernize and reform Chinese Buddhism in the early 20th century. 6. Bante Sujato. Bante Sujato is an Australian monk who is a leading teacher and author in the Theravada tradition. 7. Vain. Master Shaoxing Yu. Vain. Master Shaoxing Yu is a Chinese Buddhist monk and teacher who is the founder of the Fogwangshan Buddhist Order, one of the largest Buddhist organizations in Taiwan. These are just a few examples of the many leaders in Buddhism today, and there are many other prominent teachers and leaders in different Buddhist traditions and communities around the world. Buddhism and Astronomy Buddhism has had a complex relationship with astronomy throughout its history. In ancient India, where Buddhism originated, there were already established astronomical traditions. And early Buddhist texts show some familiarity with the motions of the sun, moon, and stars, as well as the concept of a cosmic cycle. In the Buddhist cosmology, the universe is thought to have a cyclical nature, with the world going through periods of growth, stability, decline, and destruction, before being reborn again. This idea is similar to the cyclical views of the universe found in other ancient cultures such as ancient Greece and ancient China. In addition, the Buddha himself is said to have made predictions about astronomical events, such as the timing of eclipses, in order to gain credibility and followers. Buddhism also has a concept of time known as kalpas which are very long periods of time, during which the world goes through cycles of creation destruction and renovation, which could be interpreted as a cosmic cycle. In some Mahayana Buddhism, particularly in China and Japan, there was a strong interest in astrology and divination, and some Buddhist texts were written on these topics. However, in Theravad Buddhism, where the emphasis is on individual spiritual development and the attainment of enlightenment, there is less emphasis on astronomical and cosmological concepts. In any case, it's worth noting that Buddhism as a religion doesn't have a specific doctrine or teaching related to astronomy, and there are different perspectives and interpretations among different schools and traditions. Buddhism and Science Buddhism and science have had a complex relationship throughout history. On one hand, Buddhism has traditionally emphasized spiritual practices and the cultivation of inner wisdom, while science has focused on the study of the natural world using empirical methods. On the other hand, both Buddhism and science share an interest in understanding the nature of reality and the workings of the mind and the universe. Some scientists, philosophers, and scholars have drawn parallels between Buddhist concepts such as emptiness and dependent origination, and modern scientific theories such as quantum mechanics and the theory of evolution. Some have also argued that Buddhism's emphasis on mindfulness and self-awareness can be beneficial for scientific research and inquiry. There are also Buddhist scholars and practitioners who have been interested in the scientific study of the mind and consciousness and have explored the potential for Buddhism to inform and be informed by the scientific study of the mind. However, it's worth noting that Buddhism and science are two distinct fields with different methodologies, and there are also differences in perspective and approach. Some Buddhist scholars and practitioners may view science as a complementary discipline to Buddhism, while others may see it as a fundamentally different way of understanding the world. In any case, there are ongoing efforts to explore the potential connections and similarities between Buddhism and science and to foster dialogue and collaboration between the two fields. Buddhism and Social Media Buddhism, like many other religious and spiritual traditions, has a presence on social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Social media has provided a new way for Buddhist organizations and individuals to share teachings, connect with communities, and spread the Buddhist message. On social media, there are many accounts, 
pages, and groups that are dedicated to Buddhism, some of them are run by monasteries, temples, and Buddhist organizations, while others are run by individuals. These accounts often share teachings, quotes, and reflections from the Buddhist texts, as well as information about upcoming events and practices. Social media also provides a platform for Buddhist teachers and leaders to connect with a wider audience and to share their teachings and insights. Some teachers use social media to livestream teachings and meditation sessions, making them accessible to people all over the world. Additionally, social media can also be used to connect with other Buddhist practitioners, to form online communities, and to share resources and support. However, it's worth noting that not all Buddhist teachers or practitioners embrace social media, and some may view it as a distraction from the traditional forms of practice and study. Also, it's important to keep in mind that not all information shared on social media may be accurate or authentic, and it's important to be critical and discerning in one's engagement with Buddhism on social media. In any case, social media has provided a new way for Buddhism to connect with people and it has become an important tool for sharing and spreading the teachings of Buddhism. Buddhism and Politics Buddhism, like many other religious and spiritual traditions, has had a complex relationship with politics throughout history. On one hand, Buddhism has traditionally emphasized spiritual practices and the cultivation of inner wisdom, and has not typically been directly involved in political matters. On the other hand, Buddhism has been a part of the cultural, social, and political fabric of the societies in which it has existed, and has often interacted with political power in various ways. In many Buddhist countries, such as Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Myanmar, Buddhism has been closely associated with the state and has played a significant role in shaping the political and cultural landscape. Monks and temples have been involved in political activities, such as providing religious legitimation for rulers, and in some cases, taking part in political resistance movements. In recent years, Buddhism has also been associated with various political movements, particularly in Asia. For example, in Sri Lanka, Buddhist nationalism groups have been associated with the persecution of minority groups such as Tamils and Muslims. In addition, in some countries like Myanmar, the military government has used Buddhism to justify its actions. While in other countries like Bhutan, Buddhism is used as a way to maintain cultural and national identity. However, it's worth noting that Buddhism as a religion doesn't have a specific doctrine or teaching related to politics, and there are different perspectives and interpretations among different schools and traditions. Some Buddhist practitioners may see Buddhism as a way to promote peace and social justice, while others may view it as a way to maintain the status quo or to support certain political ideologies. In any case, Buddhism's relationship with politics is complex and multifaceted, and it's shaped by historical, cultural, and social factors. Modern Buddhist Teachings Modern Buddhism refers to the adaptation and interpretation of Buddhist teachings in the context of contemporary society. It often emphasizes the practical application of Buddhist principles in everyday life, rather than focusing solely on traditional monastic practices. One of the key teachings of modern Buddhism is mindfulness, the practice of being present and aware in the moment. This is often taught as a way to improve mental and physical health as well as to increase one's sense of well-being and happiness. Another modern Buddhist teaching is compassion, which is understood as the ability to empathize and connect with others. This is often taught as a way to promote social justice, and to support the welfare of others. Social engagement is also an important aspect of modern Buddhism. This refers to the engagement of Buddhism in the social and political issues, such as environmentalism, gender equality, and peace building. Modern Buddhism also emphasizes the development of wisdom, which is seen as the ability to see things as they really are, and to understand the nature of reality.
This is often taught as a way to achieve inner peace and to overcome suffering. It's worth noting that modern Buddhism is not a unified movement, and different teachers and organizations may have different interpretations and approaches to the teachings. However, the common thread is that, modern Buddhism tends to focus on how to apply the teachings in a practical way to improve one's daily life and to contribute to the well-being of others. Summarize Buddhism and Modern Society Buddhism has traditionally emphasized spiritual practices and the cultivation of inner wisdom, but in recent years, it has also been adapted and integrated into modern society in various ways. In many Buddhist countries, Buddhism has been closely associated with the state and has played a significant role in shaping the political and cultural landscape. However, Buddhism is also present in many non-Buddhist countries and has adapted to the different cultural and social contexts. Many Buddhist organizations and individuals use modern technology such as social media to share teachings, connect with communities, and spread the Buddhist message. There are also ongoing efforts to explore the potential connections and similarities between Buddhism and science and to foster dialogue and collaboration between the two fields. Additionally, Buddhism's teachings on mindfulness and self-awareness have been integrated into various fields such as health and wellness, business, and personal development. However, it's worth noting that not all Buddhist teachers or practitioners embrace the integration of Buddhism into modern society, and some may view it as a distraction from the traditional forms of practice and study. Also, it's important to keep in mind that the integration of Buddhism into modern society is complex and multifaceted, shaped by historical, cultural, and social factors. Thanks for watching. Watch more such informative videos on the HowTuber.